hello everyone welcome back today's video is actually a vlog and i didn't have an intro so i thought i would sit down quickly and film an intro if you don't follow me on instagram which you should it's at zonora's life i'll link to it in the description box below you would not know but if you do follow me there you would know that i went to greece in november and I visited specifically Athens, Greece. This is where I spent my time. It is more of an educational trip because the reason I wanted to go to Athens is to visit the historical sites. Um, keep in mind, you know, it's the birthplace of democracy. It's so rich in history. Everything is so old. And I am a big nerd, if anybody didn't know that. I just, I love to learn. I love history and traveling the world and seeing things with your own eyes it you know it excites me and i get really really happy i think it's probably the happiest i get is to travel and to see these things and to you know walk in the footsteps of great people and and i love love my experience i really really hope you enjoy the vlog um i'm not gonna do an outro so i'm just gonna cut it off where it's my sort of last day in athens but I will narrate throughout the video where I'm going and the reason why it's super special. I wanted to do realistic vlogging. I didn't want to just show you the historical sites. I wanted to include the city streets. So if you're going to walk onto the streets, it's what, you know, that's what you will see and encounter. And I hope you enjoy the vlog. I had a really, really, really good time. I do recommend it. I do have some tips, so I might throw in some tips while I'm not narrating each place that I did visit. And I hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the comment section below if you've been to Greece, if you have any tips for anybody, that would be great if you can share to help other people out. So let's get to it. This is my view from my balcony of my hotel room, which was the most amazing sight to wake up and see the mountains, the clouds, Temple of Zeus right outside my window. I really miss this, seeing this when I wake up in the morning. It was amazing. And this was sort of right beneath like my balcony. When you look out, you can see the cars. There's a lot of cyclists on the road. It's really loud, just FYI, if you're traveling. It is really loud and yeah, you can kind of see this is the geography of the streets. It's called the Ark of Hadron, and it is built for Roman Empire Hadron in honor to honor him for his benefactors to Athens. And it's not sure who commissioned it. It was built in 131-132 uh, AD, and it's, it's basically from an ancient road of Athens right through the city to the Temple of Zeus, which we're coming upon right now. This was an ancient temple in Olympia, Greece, dedicated to the god Zeus. It was built in the 5th century BC, considered a religious ancient site. You're looking here at some of the Roman baths. I'm not sure if these were built at the same time, but it's built in the architectural style of classical Greece temple of the Doric order and pretty much made of all limestone which is very cool when you think of it. It's known that the statue of Zeus was so tall that if he stood up, he would literally be through the roof of this thing and it is massively tall. There are no copies ever made, so it was destroyed in fifth century BC, which is really sad. This is one of the, the pillars that fell and I took an up close to it. So you can kind of see how they built it, which was in pieces. I am excited to see it. It's something I wanted to see my whole life. Um and uh, this is what you see this is where you pay it says the Acropolis is a historical site and this is what I got which is the 30 euros and it includes all these sites I want to kind of point out that it does include the Temple of Zeus so I didn't have to pay extra which I wish I had gone to the Acropolis first and gotten that 30 euros instead of paying extra at the Temple of Zeus for entry there this is what you see when you're when you enter on your walkway to the Acropolis and you can see it's filled with lots of tourists. There are a lot of different tourists from all around the world visiting as well. And you can sort of see a little bit there. This is the Sanctuary of Dionysus, which is the god of plays and wine. And he was uh, perfectly structured where he was meant to be because you're going to see the amphitheater coming up very soon when um, it was built in... I believe 6th century BC and it is cut into the foot of the Acropolis on the southern cliff. It's the birthplace of Greek tragedy. I could stand here and stare at this for hours because it literally is the first theatre that's ever been built in the entire world. And it is a beautiful, beautiful sight to see. It 
made me really, really happy to be there. And it can seat up to 17,000 people, which you can see it in all its glory right now. And it was amazing to stand and to know that so many people stood in this exact same position. Millions of people from the 6th century BC. I'm zooming up on a couple of chairs that are very unique. They're made of marble. Very unique. This is where the aristocratic people would sit. You can see some of the art in the marble that's displayed at the foot of where the plays would take place. And this is another, I couldn't get enough of it. I had to sort of show you the Athens, like the city of Athens in the background and how glorious it would have been to have a play there with the city as a backdrop. And think of how many people sat here and was entertained. This is the first entertainment theater in the entire world. Think about that for a second. It was hard for me to digest and I'm probably gonna be panning up behind me so you can see the Acropolis and the Parthenon, which I will be entering very soon. We're moving to the Odeon of the Herodus Atticus, and this is a stone theater at the Acropolis as well. And it was built in 161 AD in memory of his wife, which I think is really beautiful. I don't think people know that this was made in memory of his wife. Seats about 5,000 people, but it was ruined in 267 AD. From there, we're going to walk up to the Parthenon, which I wanted you to see the view from when you're walking up the Acropolis of the city of Athens. So this is on the southern side, I believe. It's beautiful. You can see the Aegean Sea. Uh, when you get a little bit higher up, it just is breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking. And this is what you see when you go up. It was raining that day. It did say that, to caution you, it was really, really slippery. It's all marble. and. Here you can see a panoramic view of the city of Athens on the northern side. It is absolutely breathtaking, I could see. This is the view of Alexander the Great. This is, this is what he would have seen. And here I am freaking out because I cannot believe I'm from the Parthenon. This was a former temple dedicated to Athena, built between 447 BC to 438 BC. I'm giving a bit of a historical guide there. And it is the most important surviving building in classical Greece, and it symbolizes the Athenian democracy and Western civilization, pretty much. In the 6th century HD, it converted to a Christian church, to Virgin Mary, and in, in 1460s, when the Ottoman Empire conquest turned it into a mosque, unfortunately, that's where they kept some ammunition, so when they were being um, bombarded by the Venetians, it ignited and exploded. So some of the Parthenon is sort of ruined because of that. But you can see there's some ancient graffiti as well. You can see someone wrote from the 1980, I believe. And I just had some fun looking at all the intricacies of certain things that get overlooked when you go up to the Parthenon. So I wanted to, sh I wanted to show you guys all of that. And I believe there's some love between Nigel and Sue. I hope Nigel and Sue are still together and wherever they are. I couldn't believe that I'm standing in front of the Parthenon. I'm still in shock. You can see they're restoring it. They're trying their best to at least. And this is the older Athenian temple to the other side. And you can see some of the architectural detail. Absolutely breathtaking. Couldn't believe it. Still can't believe it. Pinch myself. When you walk down from the Acropolis, uh, you see that there's many other things you can go and look into. Right in front of me, you're gonna see this really old um, Orthodox church. Could not enter it, but I thought it was really neat. That is like an original church in a modernized buildings around it. And there are certain times I think you can open. It is open for you to see. And you can, there's the Parthenon up there as well. So this is on the other side. There was a man with a bunch of cats. He was playing a ton of songs and he was feeding them cat milk. It was pretty cool. <laughs> And here, this is the other side of the Odeon of Herodus Atticus again. So you can see it's full marble on the floor. This is the region they call the Placa, which is for tourists where you can buy little uh, trinkets for your loved ones or to commemorate your trip. I thought it was a neat alleyway and I did buy a couple of things in this, uh, in this region here. I just love the architecture. I, I could sit there and just stare at it. 
and you can see on each side there are shops um, where you can purchase things such as keychains and statues and bookmarks and whatever whatever you want really purses bags anything you can think of they have it clothes and there are lots of hotels in this area as well so there's also a lot of graffiti I wanted to get that into the on the camera as well because uh, you will see a lot of graffiti in Athens and this is the next day it's raining really really heavy and I wanted to capture it because I saw a true thunderbolt that Zeus would throw in the sky I swear to you I did see it and here are some of the city streets that I was talking about this is going on the bus where it's raining but I wanted to show you what Athens looked like in real life with real sight not just uh, some of the historical sites. So you can see that there's a, uh, everyone's waiting for the bus on the left hand side here, which I thought was kind of cool. You're gonna come up next to something called a square, which we kind of passed. <laughs> now we're moving towards some of the government buildings, which is kind of neat because you can see the old architecture of some of these buildings when you look at it, because they're replicated in the Western wall, uh, like the pillars, and uh, you can see them structured next to modern buildings as well, which I thought was kind of cool. And here you see lots of cars. It is just a busy street, people going about their day, but it's really chill. Like everybody is doing their thing. I really, really enjoyed Greece and I would go back. You can sort of see the mountain range in the back peeking through loved the fact that there were so many mountains. I could stare at the mountains forever. considered the most luxurious expensive street in all of Athens this is where um, a lot of the wealthy people live and the most expensive real estate in all of Athens love the trees as you can see and you're gonna come upon where the president his house where he stays when he is in Athens very soon which is heavily guarded right there <laughs> that's where he stays and there's also a mansion, which I'm not quite sure who lives in it, but you're going to be seeing it very, very quickly, which I thought was really, really cool because I didn't get to see very many mansions when I was in Athens. That's the only one I saw. And next, it's going to drop me off very soon to the Pananathic Stadium. I can never say that right, but it's built in 330 BC for the Panathenic Games, I can never say that proper, but it is the only one in the entire world that is marble, and here I am running, celebrating. The first Olympic Games that was held in modern times was in 1869, and after the rise of Christianity in the 4th century um, AD, it was largely abandoned, so this is amazing I hope you can get the sense of what the crowd must have been like sitting roaring at a game to see the gladiators which we're gonna see that where they entered and exit pretty soon coming up but just to give you a sense of how vast the stadium is and how steep those steps are I climbed it and I was absolutely frightened and here's the view from on top. You can see the Acropolis, the uh, Parthenon up there. This is at the very top. And they do have a king and queen chair. And of course, I had to go sit in the queen's chair because you can't go and not sit there. Here I am waving to the imaginary crowd. And we are entering where the gladiators would exit and enter the arena. I got absolute chills when I walked in here. And I could feel the energy. I, that's the best way I could explain it. It was amazing. It really puts into perspective. I had to touch the wall to prove that I was here, of course. And walking through, you get a sense of how daunting it must have been for them when they entered and exit the stadium, not knowing the outcome. 
and when you walk through here you're going to exit out into an area where you can walk up the stairs and there were many different Olympic torches that they do keep. For example here, right, you can see the Montreal from 1976, they keep all the Olympic torches uh, in the stadium uh, from very various years, dating all the way back from Tokyo, you can see 1954 uh, to 1928, all the torches from what I could see was there, visible. Uh, you can go and check it out anytime you're there and it was really really cool to know that after the Olympic Games this is where they they live this is their house and it's a very interesting place you get a sense of history just how many Olympians exist and how much blood sweat and tears went into training it was a very humbling experience to see all the torches from hundred years ago really and here I am exiting out again that cave this is what it was like for them when they were walking out I get a sense of uh, just repeating it for all of you so you can enter and you can exit this uh, this piece to come out into the stadium and you can get an idea of what it must have felt like for a gladiator or an Olympian to walk out and see the crowd for the very first time and how nervous they must have been not knowing what would take place and the excitement and the fear I really hope that this little piece captured the stadium because it was one of my favorite places that I visited you really got a sense of you know Athens and Greece and the Olympics and what it's so very um, well known for so is one of the gardens in Athens I think it's called um, one of the main city gardens and didn't really spend too much time here just sort of walk through it's a nice little green area if you're in a city and you just want to see some greenery um, this is their national park and they do have certain benches where you can sit and just enjoy there's lots of birds in this area lots of parrots and uh, people walk through after work it's kind of very relaxing and very chill and I think there's a lot of leaves on the ground here too because this is November is considered the beginning of winter for them but it's a very relaxing easy going place and uh, yeah it's kind of nice to see some greenery in the entire city so this this was fun I enjoyed it and here it is we are walking on the streets here and this is also the day where there was a riot and all the streets got shut down and that's the temple of Zeus on the walls on the other side of the street and there's police officers every block and the roads were blocked off here are the national guards for Greece I thought it was really cool. I wanted you guys to see it. They stand like that for an hour and they don't move and they take turns standing like that for an hour. This is the university in Athens. Beautiful, beautiful architecture. I could stand here for days and just stare at the architecture. It's so beautiful. the day after the riots and you can see on the streets there are not a lot of people as normal I noticed there's a couple but not as much and this is what you'll see if you are walking downtown Athens it's very quiet very relaxed the next day and you can see some of the buildings are uh, being rebuilt or some of the buildings are really 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 old you can see some of the graffiti there so they're fixing it and it's a common theme throughout the entire city streets. You'll see certain parts with a lot of graffiti and a lot of uh, restructuring as well. And this is on my way to the National Archaeological Museum of Athens. I can't stress enough how amazing my experience was. This is right outside. You can see there's 
tons and tons of pigeons. I didn't, I took a lot of footage when I went inside, but I'm not showing it as much in this video, uh, just because I think it's worth it. This is medicine in Greece, and in the ancient Greek times, you can see cupping was a big deal back then. And these are the ancient instruments that they used. And having a huge medical background and interest in medicine, this to me was fascinating. This is what they used back in the ancient times. Crazy, right? And you can see there's some statues. Um, the thing is that you need a lot of time when you come to this archaeological museum. Didn't get to see everything. There's a lot of things from the Bronze Era, from the Mycenaean culture. I didn't get to see everything. So it closes from Tuesday to Sunday at 4 p.m. and it opens at 9 a.m. and you really do need to spend the entire day there because you're not going to see everything if you just go for four or five hours. And they have this neat little sanctuary inside. This is their little cafe in there, which I thought was real cool. I uh, was not expecting this at all, so it was kind of neat. And here, this is Exiton, uh, the Archaeological Museum of Athens. And you can see this is from the riot the day before. And November 17th, I believe, is a very special day in Athens uh, for something that they, um, the reason for the riot. So that's why that is there. And as you can see, there's still a lot of graffiti along some of the walls and it's a mix of some stores have graffiti, some don't. So, but if you do see it, you see a lot of it. A lot of it is artistic as well, as you can see there. So it's not just all graffiti, it's pretty neat. And this is just some of the downtown city streets and the core of Athens away from uh, the Acropolis is not so close. Uh, this is moving towards uh, the Aegean Sea as well. So I hope you enjoyed this little tidbit of seeing the inside streets of Athens. Good morning. This is the last day, well, last morning in Athens. So I'm up to watch the sunrise. I love sunrises and sunsets. So that's what I'm gonna do. And it's been a good time. I really enjoyed myself. I don't know why I was bored. I feel like the whole city still sleeping. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a really good outside this row by the way. Sit in on the balcony in my room. Looking at this beautiful view. I'm really happy it came. I'm really, really happy it came. It's been a good trip. It's been a good trip. I'm gonna miss this view. See the temple as soon as was the sunrise on the very last day and you can just see the clouds and the sun peeking through the temple of Zeus and I made a couple wishes I hope they come true and yeah so goodbye Athens it was lovely I'm so blessed and grateful and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one bye